All right. Uh, welcome, everybody, to the Evolution Working Group call. Uh, today is December 5th. It's not December 5th. That's the next meeting. Today is November 21st, 2019. <laughs> um, let me go ahead and post the, uh, the meeting notes in here for everybody. Um, so uh, I figured today um, there's not a whole lot of like uh, PRs and stuff to go through. Um, I think the main thing that I want to try to work on today is um, just kind of talking about some metrics, working through some stuff together um, and kind of just trying to think through some of what the ones that we want for release are and then trying to work those out um, collaboratively. Uh, one thing I did want to uh, bring up really quick though, um, so in December, we have two meetings scheduled on the 5th and the 19th. Um, I'm assuming the 5th won't be um, too much of a problem since it's kind of still far away from like Christmas and like mm -hmm. holiday breaks for most people. Um, but the 19th, I know, is pretty probably pretty close for a lot of people. Um, might be going out of town, be doing other stuff. Um, so I just want to get a general feel. Should we just go ahead and have that meeting? I'm totally fine with that. I'll be off of school, so I'll be totally free. Um, but if we would rather just cancel that one and continue to work until the metrics release, um, anybody have any thoughts on that? I'm available, so I'll be around. Okay. Yep. And that's a, almost a solid week before Christmas. So. Okay. Um, totally sounds good. good. Yep. I just wanted to to bring it up because it was yep. something that I thought about. Um, okay, so uh, last week Sean Georg and I. Um, worked on so I, I've got a link to the this uh, Google folder Google Drive folder uh, in the meeting notes and so what we did last week is we sat down the three of us pardon me <coughs> and worked on the issue resolution duration um, I'll go ahead and okay. share my screen if that makes things easier um, Not always, and, but... come again uh, Sometimes, yeah. I mean, I'll just go right to the. Document. Oh, okay, perfect. Um, so what we did is uh, we worked on this issue resolution duration uh, metric and kind of talked through some of the stuff together. I think we, do we uh, opening? Did we close that pull request, Georg? Did we merge it? Oh, I don't recall. Um, let me. Let's go check it out. Yep. I don't think we did. I think we left it open. Oh, yes. Um, we did not close it. So uh, this one, um, the PR just kind of goes through the issue. Resolution. It just basically copies it over and deletes the old file. Um, it doesn't delete it so much as it renames it. Um, so it's pull 264, which I will I'll post that in the chat. Um, so if we want, we can we can talk about this metric. Um, if we think it's ready to be merged, uh, we can do that. Um, yeah, there's just, I'm going to add resources at the bottom. Mm -hmm. mm. Okay, I'm just looking at the structure. Yep. Maybe for each closed issue, issue resolution, timestamp of issue closed, timestamp of issue opened, maybe, instead of opens. Um, which part are you uh, under? Implementation, I'm here. Implementation. Oh, yeah, I think it uh, opened, makes sense. Okay. Right. Um, yeah, I would recommend taking this and putting it into a PR. Okay. Is it in a PR already? Yeah, it's in a PR. Um, so, uh, and then the adding the resources section you said as well? Yeah, so if you can update the PR for that. Yep, um, what should I put under the, the heading? Just leave it blank. In terms of like updates? Or like uh, content under resources. Oh yeah, just leave it blank. Okay. Um, 
I sometimes put none in the resource section. If you yeah. Have none, but That's I, fine. I'm not sure what to do. Which one is better? I'll put a. Uh, I'll put none for now. Um, okay. So the I've changed that to say opened instead of opens, and then added the resources. Um, anything else from anybody before I make this commit? Mm -mm. Okay, so I'm on the spreadsheet. I'm marking issue resolution duration as basically ready for next release. Sounds good to me. Okay. Perfect. So I've a uh, people are. Oops, not that. Um, if there are no uh, objections. I say we can. I I think we're going to go ahead and merge this. If yeah, you guys are okay with time. All righty. Do that and then I um, click a link to the spreadsheet there for folks if they just want to track what I'm doing. <clears throat> Thanks, Matt. Mm -hmm. um, and then also uh, this pull request that Georg opened a couple days ago, um, just about adding the uh, funding.yaml, um, yeah. which I'm super in favor of. Um, just wanted to bring it to the attention of everybody. Yep. I think it's great to go ahead and merge if we're okay with that. Yep. It's perfect. It looks good, I think. Yeah. And we already have it on the governance and the metrics repo. So I just went and added a suggestion to add it to all of the working groups. And we appreciate that. You're welcome. All right. So we've got those PRs merged. Let me. Oh, sweet. Uh, thank you, Gabriel, for evolution in that folder that you shared. Are there other metrics that are close to being done? Um, I don't know which ones are closest to being done. I think Sean has been working on some of these. I know contributors has a little bit of stuff written for it, and I figured we could just start at the top um, and work with that one. So uh, the link is in the the notes, but I'll go ahead and post the link to the contributors document directly. Um, mm -hmm. And I think just kind of talking through this together and working on um, what sure. we wanted to say would be a, a fruitful exercise. Um, so what it's got right now is the, the question it's trying to answer is how many contributors, I should probably say, does a repository have? Um, and the description is, I guess, an indication of how many contributors and then defines what a contributor is. Um, so is that definition of a contributor? Should we call it a repository contributor? I mean, uh, well, I think I think that'd be fine. Is there some like is there a would you imagine there being a separate metric for like organization contributor perhaps or like file contributor like to a specific set of files or something? Or is it just to make it more clear? Um, well, just because, because like, so for example, the email that Georg posted today about diversity access tickets mm -hmm. and getting that up and running, I mean, that's a clear contribution mm -hmm. to the community. Okay. And so I at see. the moment that would, that effort wouldn't be captured. Okay. Yeah. In that case, I think so, that's just a thought. Yeah. I didn't. I think uh, repository contributors would be a good shift because I think that's, then we can still define a separate, like all contributors metric, like in any shape or form. Mm -hmm. um, so the, if we say repository contributors, then we have to remove issues and pull requests because that is not part of the repository. Issues are discussions and pull requests are code reviews and they happen outside of the Git log. And I'm applying a very narrow definition of repository here. Well, is there a better <laughs> word than repository? I'm just trying to not lose the other contributions. That's all. Mm -hmm. We sometimes um, refer to people as code contributors, but if they are commenting and reviewing on issues and pull requests, that's not code either. Mm -hmm. Some, I don't know how, I mean, 
one, I guess, maybe like project, like the project consists of issues, pull requests and code perhaps, but then also you could define the project, I think to also include the case we were talking about, like getting the diversity tickets, like that's part of the effort of the project. So would that count? So that might be too, gen that may be too generic. Could be, so yeah, that, that's one way. Could we just leave it contributors and add a note somewhere that we want to be inclusive? And include also mailing lists and Slack and IRC. Yeah, I mean that's the other option, just to say this is about all contributors. Mm -hmm. And then we don't have like a. I know low term might not be the best, but like a repository contributor versus a right event contributor versus a. And we can have that as a filter. Mm -hmm. Okay. that you could filter on repository activity is that what you're saying or filter on event activity or whatever it might yeah. be okay and then they filter by location of engagement which could include um, repository authors issue authors Review participants. Mm -hmm. Event participants. Mm -hmm. Would we consider things like um, documentation and marketing to be part of? Yeah, I mean, I'm not sure if, if that's helping the cause. Of mm -hmm. the I'm not sure how to say how yeah, like what uh, word. I'm just words. I'm yeah, for him to mm -hmm. type the appropriate thing. I think it. I, I don't. I think we could spend a, a lot, a long time trying to list out all the different things. I think at this point, if people are reading this, so they would be able to figure out like pretty much anywhere somebody contributes. Um, For example. Yeah, I think that's perfect. Um, um, yeah. Okay, we're all in the same document, right? Because I. Yes. The two others in the document, so I was worried that I wasn't. I'm wrong. here. Yep. So am I. Perfect. Pardon me. Um, and so then we should probably get rid of this section um, Project. in in the description um, about defining what a contributor is as somebody who commits code, creates an issue, creates a pull request. Yep. Um, so contributes to the who contributes to the project. In any way, <laughs> I mean, that's really what this is. Yeah, that's it. I mean, it doesn't have to be complex. Mm-hmm. So the objective. I think if I want to know how many contributors. Yeah. I think I. I mm, I don't know if like size of the project is a good way to like, you know, like how many is it? I mean, there's a difference between how many people have ever done anything to the project, like no matter how small versus like actively maintain and are actively involved. So I don't know if like size, but like almost maybe what's the, the reach of contributions, like that might be something. Um, thinking about it in terms of like a bus factor, which is, I know, a totally different metric. Um, but like, are there a lot of core contributors? Are there a lot of ephemeral contributors? Um, I think I'm trying to, at this point, it's, well, we didn't, we, uh, I don't think myself into a circle. Gonna 
pull up. Uh... It's important and knowing. Yeah, it's important and knowing who opened the code base. So I was also thinking um, that we could make this metric a more broad by saying who contributes to a project. And then in filters or visualizations or somewhere, we say that like the count can aggregate the count into a number. But I know that many people who use Petrugia dashboards want to know, okay, who's actually doing things. Which then that makes it into a common metric. So I think mm -hmm. contributors is actually a common metric. Could you say that again, Georg? I was typing. Uh, two two things. One, I think contributors is a common metric mm -hmm. because it answers a question about who is active. And then the second is rather than asking how many contributors does a project have, to ask who are the contributors in a project? And then we can have an aggregator of the sum of number of contributors as a way to visualize that information. Mm -hmm. So like that for the question? Yeah. Yeah, one other thing is we measure contributors or contribution towards a particular artifacts we deliverable, for example, what's a particular release, like what Georg said, then at the end, we can still aggregate that, okay, in this project, these uh, people have been contributing, but what's this particular release who are like the active people? So if you want to have a snapshot mm -hmm. at any given point, you'll be able to see those who are actually active, like the current contributors yep. and activities. But over time, you'll be able to see those who have contributed as well. I, I like that. I added it in filters. I added mm -hmm. a release cycle as a filter and then also time of activity in the project. Mm -hmm. This is a pretty small, nit, kind of an almost a nitpicky, not really, but should we say who are the for the question who are the contributors within a project or to a project because to me within is like i am part of like i've been in, accepted into the project almost in the case like a barrier versus two it's just like i'm doing something for them like i'm giving it to them whether i'm inside or not if that makes sense no it does that's great wordsmithing is important i agree So, Georg, you had mentioned in terms of visualizations. Does Grimoire Lab have these types of visualizations? Yeah, I'll pull in a screenshot here in just a moment. Okay. So go more lab. And I know that um, because the way you're talking about Georg, the way that Augur now houses facade, 
that would be similar, I think. Okay, I'd, what's the connection between contributors and facade? Well, facade shows who's making commits to the project. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'll pull up. Uh, let's see. Can you do a screenshot of that, Carter? Just from yeah. Any. So that would be under a list of contributor names. All right. We're getting there. So for the. Great, that's good shot eventually. There we go. Um, while you guys were doing that, I also uh, I added an aggregator and a parameter, just the aggregator being a count and a parameter being the period of time for which we're considering um, up under implementation. I just wanted to mention that. Okay. I'm gonna pull the Zephyr. <coughs> oh, pardon me, sorry. I'm thinking, oh, I added that already. It's up at top. It's just listed. Oh, you did. <laughs> yeah. Beat me to it. <laughs> I didn't even see that. Delete five. Yep. Perfect. And I'm thinking. For let's see. DNI. Ooh. 
is this event? Party speakers did not hear several questions. I just pulled that from DNI. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Looks good to me. I like it. Well, well we have to pull we have to rewrite these questions. Mm -hmm. What I did here. You say we need, I assume we need to rewrite these questions. Is that what you said, Matt? Yeah, I'm just pulling it from diversity just so we can. Mm -hmm. Uh, so if we ask the question, who are the contributors to a project? That's what we are trying to get at, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I guess if we're asking community members, yeah. What is the Likert scale? Like a rate one to seven, how you feel. Oh, okay. I didn't know that had a name. <laughs> it does. Does that surprise you? <laughs> it <laughs> Everything's got a fancy name. <sighs> well, I learned something new today. And so we need to change these questions too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the formatting didn't. Blah. There was a table mixed in. I know. I don't. I just. It was weird. I just pulled it up from the DNI PR. I don't know how why I believe that to be a table, but whatever. <laughs> I think we can. Blah. I was just removing the table Thank formatting, you. so now it should be fixed. Uh, um. So. I don't know if, what a survey would ask here. Like maybe, do you feel your contribution is important? Mm, if it's not important, then why did they do it? <laughs> that's a that's a good one. I wouldn't. Um, that wouldn't really be a Likert scale question. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So would uh, yeah. Oh, here in what capacity do you contribute to the project? And then it's actually. Yeah. So is the is the first one just like I contribute on a scale of one to how much I feel I'm contributing, or like them like to them? Yeah, it could be. Okay. 
Like if I asked you on a scale of one to seven, how much do you feel like you're contributing to the chaos project? Okay. Um, yeah, the ASF survey has an item here. Um, like that? I, I'll have to look it up what it exactly is, but yes, similar. Uh, ASF? Apache Software, Software Foundation. Foundation. Gotcha. They call it how often do you engage in the following activities in the project or in the ASF? Yeah, why not just reuse that, you know? Mm hmm. I'll go with that. And this one is a matrix. Never rarely. Okay, so I like the idea of this actually becoming a common metric. I agree. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because I think it's a way to, like if we're looking at time zones or the types of contributors, this, um, we have like organizational affiliation. That, these are all things in common. Mm -hmm. So I think this would be a useful metric there. I concur. Okay. So, I'm going to, when this is done, I'm going to make a note here, contributors. I'm just going to say moved to common. In the uh, release sheet? Yeah. So in evolution, I marked it as moved to common. Mm -hmm. I'm going to mark it actually as red for the time being. And then in common, so definitely, oh, so they have a contributor, they actually already have a contributor metric there. Oh, do they? <laughs> so. <laughs> How is this better? Uh, well, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, they, they don't have one. They, it was just on their list of the who's. So point being, they were thinking, the common working group was thinking the same way. Good. <laughs> Something we can also add that may, might make our work useful for both the academic and industry is try to find out how much the language or the programming language affects contributions because a lot of work is not yet done in this area. You know, like uh, the way some people, like criteria people use to choose the project that they join to contribute. Yep. The choice of the language itself is also something that influences, but they don't know much work in the academic is, has not really, really covered this area. So would that be, it's not really a location issue, but I'm thinking of filters. Mm -hmm. So Armstrong, do you think that that's a, so like the, the language would actually be kind of a, a top level filter as to how we think about contributions, is that right? Yeah, because you see like most ecosystems that uh, are built on Python these days, yep. or let's say something like Kubernetes kind of language like who tends to attract a lot of contributors. Right. Yeah. And so your contention is, is that if it's in a fairly obscure programming language that might inhibit contribution? Some, something like that, we might now have detailed information to make meaningful conclusion. Okay. Um, I'm going to put it as a filter.
it probably wouldn't be applicable to every project, but maybe also lang like certain languages within a project. Like there, if there's maybe a backend and a front end part, and the backends in JavaScript and the or the front ends in JavaScript and the backends in Python, maybe also seeing, you know, which parts of the if it's a particularly large project, maybe the back end has far more contributions than the front end because maybe more people know Python in that ecosystem, whatever. But just a thought. Yep, that's a good thought. Okay, that was good. Yeah. Um, yeah, I really like this. Well, I didn't move evolution forward. <laughs> some common work here <laughs> but we did but amazing work look at us we did and you know what i feel like if it's common it affects everybody so so i'm gonna can somebody actually issue this as a pr in common yeah oh the oh the images are gonna come through funny aren't they they are how do you want uh, me to share the images with you? Because I can give you the raw screenshots that I have. Um, if you just uh, send me an email and I can okay. just drop them into the, the PR, I think that should work, right? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you include them as part of the PR. Carterlandis at gmail.com. Yep, ccarterlandis at gmail.com. That's the one. Yeah, you're right. C. I'm going to fork it. <coughs> um. I sent you the one I used. Thank you much. Yep. All right. So where should I issue this? In W probably be who, right? Issue it in W. I'm looking at the folk under the, the common repo, WG common, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. So I'm I'm just trying to figure out which focus area. It's probably in the who focus area. Um, no, it's uh, yeah, it's in the who. Okay. And then I just need to create. Um, so one of the suggestions I have for the names on the screenshots we have is to blur them out. Mm, good idea. That's what I've been doing. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Um, yeah, I can. Uh, I'll. F I can do that after the the call. I don't sure. want to. No problem. Um, okay, so you welcome Common Group. We love you guys. Um, <laughs> I have moved it on the spreadsheet, so we're all good there. Perfect. Um, okay, so you know, we share more with Common than you realize. We share the same time slot, just a week removed. Yeah. <laughs> our, our sisters. Just sisters and brothers. <laughs> do a merger <laughs> um okay yeah um i will totally get that finished up after the call it should be no problem um i know we've we got about 20 minutes left so we probably could work a little bit more on another one we might not get all the way through it depends on which one we pick and how fast we go but um it. sounds good um so i know can so we just did contributors issue resolution duration uh, we already we've already done um we could do issue contributors um not sure if that would probably be another i mean this one is specifically related to issues so it might be more in line with evolution but again it is measuring primarily contributors so it's probably also a common metric so maybe 
Well, okay. If I actually, if I look at issue age, the open issue age. Yeah, it's just called issue age. Mm -hmm. Maybe that one started a little bit. Yeah, I think. I think that one's good. That one shouldn't be too hard. No. Nah. All right, let's go for it. Um. So the metric is an indication of how long issues that are currently open have been open. So the objective is to identify issues that may be open for a long time. Not right. So to me, the, the question in the description, there's a bit of a Maybe it's just my understanding of the language and see, but the being what is the average age of issues open? Is that mean across all time? Like on average, how long is any one issue likely to be open? Or more along the lines of the ones that are open right now out of all, like what's the average of those currently sure. open? Yeah, I get what you're saying. Um. Issues, issues, age, issue, age. Um, well, we, I mean, obviously those are two, two things that we could think about because they are, mm -hmm. I think they're different. Mm -hmm. um, how long issues that are currently open have been open? So, I mean, this description is the ones that are just currently open. Mm -hmm. So maybe we'll just stick with that. Okay. What is the average age? That open issues. What is the average time? How long issues that are currently open have been open? All right, so I do identify issues that to identify open issues. So does does Augur do this? Maybe you could go pull the API. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that it does. Um, I have to look at the exact implementation details. Um, Which document are we on? We're on issue age. And so issue age was, um, yeah. So the, one of the questions that we talked about, was this the age of issues that are currently open? Or is this like the age of all, you know, issues? Over so if you, if you look at the meaning behind the two options, yeah. then the age of all issues just means how long has the project existed? Because if we continue to count the age of closed issues, then they just keep increasing the number every day. Mm -hmm. So the only useful piece of information is to look at the open issues. That's what we opted. That's where we went. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you can see the question, what is the average time that an open issue has been open? That open issues have or an every open issue has? Have. I, I, it was have, then I would have the has, and then <laughs> the metric is an indication of how long issues that are currently open have been open. Um, the objective, I, you know, I mean, it could be a couple things to identify oldest open issues in a project. Mm -hmm. Gain insight as why they've been open. Uh, 
And why else do people want to know this, Georg? Um, they want to know how well the maintainers keep on top of the incoming requests um, and how quickly um, features or bugs or so on are addressed. Yeah, that's important. Yeah, there, the way I'm describing it, it's um, very similar to the time to first response metric that we have. Mm -hmm. So I'm, maybe you can help me think through what the difference is between looking at the age of issues and time to first response. Um, I, I mean, of course, there. Like, if you have a high time to first response, you would expect your open issue age to be low. Mm -hmm. But I mean, even time to first response, I think, can even be like, "Thanks for your issue." Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I changed it to resolving issues. Okay. And how yeah. quick bugs are yeah. resolved. Time to first respond is very good, but now what happens if the time to first respond is short and then the iteration continues and becomes delayed? That's where we may have now an issue because you can post something like an issue in less than no time, somebody responds to it, but then that's it. They take now forever to resolve the issue or they don't have consistency over like to follow up, that's when where another matrix like what you're proposing can come in now to address. Like some sort of, we've identified a fix, it's coming in the next release, and then the next release isn't for like a month, that kind of thing. Yeah. So it just sits there, looks like it's not, nothing's happening, but they've, yeah. okay. I, hmm. Yeah, I think that's why we have a host of different metrics mm -hmm. to get to those edge cases. Mm -hmm. But is this objective kind of hit what we're looking for? Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm not. I'm not super aligned with the first sentence and the question. So identify the oldest open issue. Um, well, I'm just. I'm trying to get it. Well, some issues are open for a long time, but there's a reason mm -hmm. why they're open for a long time. So it's just trying to get insight. Like it may not be a bad thing mm -hmm. that something's open for a long time, but if something's open for 90 days, it's probably worth <laughs> just yeah. reminding me about it. Why this is why why is this open again? <laughs> here, so I added in here when the issue age is increased, we sure. want to identify the oldest open issues. That might be tied directly to the question back. Yep, that's good. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, can we stop here? I have another meeting at 11 that I actually have to go to. Yeah. I or think I, that's I, okay. I have to stop. How about that? You more yeah. than to keep going. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, no, of course. We appreciate well, you hopping on with us, Matt. Thanks for all your help. Oh, sure. Um, so this is issue age. I'm going to mark this one as working on it. Okay. Send me a template. Ooh, pardon me. So could we, I mean, would it be possible? Could we do an action item that we actually try to close this one out? Yeah. In the meeting? Yeah. I'll have a, I'll be on Thanksgiving break all next week and uh, interspersed with all of my setting and stuff. I'm going to try to hit on some more of these metrics, keep them moving okay. for, for uh, the release at the end of the year. I will start the next meeting in two weeks with like, here's two of them that are yeah. in kind of concluded form or mm -hmm. final form. 
I mean, if you could do that, Carter, that would be great. Yeah, of course. No problem. Um, okay. Awesome. All right. Cool. Gotta go. All right. Yeah. Thank you, Matt. Thank you, so Matt. Bye. Thanks, everybody. All right. Um, I know we've got a couple minutes left. Um, so I put in implementation. Is that clear to you? Is the description clear? For all open issues, get the date. The issue is open and calculate the number of days to the current date. Aggregate using the average function. Yeah, it's good to me. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to put it in the, I'll do the aggregators. We've been doing them. Like in this style. Oh yeah, um, of course. So, average age of all currently open issues. Oops. Ah, <laughs> I don't know if that did. Um. And then I think uh, parameters would be a period of time. Um. Yeah. Filters. Um, I'm not. Maybe. Maybe this is. Um, we can filter like, by modules. We can filter by working groups. We can filter by um, language. Groups. I don't know. By tags, issue tags. Mm -hmm. Or like labels. Yep, tags and labels on the issue. Mm -hmm. um, there's one other one in there you said language um, programming language but that you wouldn't know that from the yeah issue I don't itself. think you'd know that from the issue um, the module. Um, maybe um, issues that have been reopened like they've closed and now they're open again maybe that time then maybe that's more of a parameter, but like including, like if I have an issue that opens and then it gets closed and then it gets opened again and it's open in the time period I'm looking at, like do we count just the second time that's open? Do we count from the first time it was open all the way up until now, including the time when it was closed? Um, that may be more of like a parameter, like that behavior, but that's something that I think could could be captured. Yeah. I'm not sure the best way to go about it, though. Let me do that. So, Google. Come on. <laughs> Here we go. Um, I don't know how to best put this parameter like. I don't want to say like definition of an open issue or how about like include reopened issues, um, whether or not issues that have been reopened. Well, I feel like if it's been reopened, we should include it. I think because I mean, it's an open issue, you know, but I'm just trying to think about like, do we include it from the first open? Maybe that's the better. Do you know what I'm saying? So, sorry, I so, was trying to build the visualization for this metric. You're good. So if I've got, um, do we want to worry about the behavior of capturing, capturing the behavior of having a reopened issue like, should we include it just from the reopen or from the first time it was opened all the way to the present? Like, um, in my opinion is to do it from the beginning. That's what I was thinking. Yeah. So maybe that goes in Echo in description that it also includes issues that have been reopened. I'm going to say it does.
foods. It's just thin. There, I built the visualization class. Awesome. I'm dropping it in now. Module working group. Uh, tags or labels. Um, oh, there it goes. What do you think? I like it. Um, Trying to oh. think if there are any other filters we want to worry about. I think those are probably good for now. Um, the references, I can't think of any. Data collection strategies, I feel like that one's pretty. However, we've been continuing to define. I, I know in other places in evolution, we've got examples of how we collect issues. Um, I'm probably just going to copy paste it from from there. Yeah. Um, or we can say the same as issue open. Mm. Yeah. Um, open issue. Just see. We will refer to it because we already defined it elsewhere. Yeah, I think that's actually, I think we did that for a couple of the metrics. That no, wasn't that one. It wasn't that one. I think it was closed issue resolution duration or just issue resolution duration. Oh, yep. I'm just going to do that. Perfect. And that'll do, that'll be a relative link. Um, I mean, I think this is a pretty good start. Um, for this, is there anything else you can think of, Georg? Uh, no, I'm mulling over the visualization that I built because it doesn't make sense to me. How do you I'm mean? Understanding something. So if I take open issues mm -hmm. uh, that were open 200 days ago, then mm -hmm. the average age of all issues on that day is 200. That's if true. Opened 150 days ago, it's 150. And mm -hmm. it was opened five days ago, it's five. So I'm expecting a slope here. Mm -hmm. But the graph goes up and down and it doesn't just go down to zero because there are no issues it goes down to a value that it should not exist huh so <laughs> visualization does not make sense well i'll hold off on making a pr for this one then <laughs> i'm gonna remove this graph because I don't understand what I built here. Okay. Um, I think we've got one from Augur as well. I know it's a little bit after 11, so we can go ahead and finish up, but um, I'll throw one from Augur in there as well. Okay. Yeah, if you have a graph, go for it. Yep. We'll do. All right. I got to head out. See ya. Thank you. See ya,